This video is all about how to solve hidden quadratics. What I mean by that is any equation where I can make a simple substitution to turn that equation into a, into a quadratic equation I could have solved in GCSE. Let me show you a few examples of what those equations might look like. We know that uh, quadratic equations usually look in that form, where you have a squared part at the front, the x part in the middle, and a constant on the end. So this is something that might look like a hidden quadratic. The reason I know this is a hidden quadratic is because the term in the middle, when I square that, I get the term at the front. When I do x squared squared, I get x to the power 4, and I've got a constant on the end. Same idea here. When I square this term in the middle, x to the power 5 times x to the power 5 is x to the power 10. I've got a constant on the end. So again, this is what I would call a hidden quadratic. This one, I've got um, the root x in the middle, and when I square root x, so root x times root x, I get x. And again, I've got my constant on the end. So any time where you have the term in the middle and you can square it and get the term at the front, and there's a constant on the end, that is what I mean by a hidden quadratic. A few more examples. You can see here I've got sine x. This is squared, constant on the end, so that's a hidden quadratic. Here, I've got, so you can imagine this as being b times 1 over x, and this is a times 1 over x squared. And again, when I square the 1 over x, I get 1 over x squared, constant on the end. And finally, this one on the end here, the 2 to the power x there, when I square that, when I square that, 2 to the power x times 2 to the power x, you add the powers and you get 2 to the power 2x. That's the front. So I square that, I get that, and I've got my constant on the end. So all of these are examples of what I would call hidden quadratics. And the way we solve them is we make a simple substitution, so we replace the middle term with a different letter to turn this into a quadratic. So, here is a hidden quadratic because I know that when I square this x squared I get x to the power 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say let y equal x squared, the term in the middle. So that way I know that this term at the front is going to be y squared. Then I've got seven lots of y. The 12 will stay exactly the same on the end there. There we go. So I have taken this equation, and by making this substitution, I've turned it into a simple quadratic equation I can solve now. Just make sure you're happy with what I've done there. I've said that y is equal uh, to x squared. So when I did x squared squared, that gives me the x to the power 4. The y is x squared here, so hopefully that makes sense why I've just swapped that for the y, and obviously the 12, there's no y or x there, so that just stays the same. And the whole point of doing this, if I can just create a bit more space, is this is easy to solve. You can solve that from GCSE. Um, it's going to be a minus 3 and a minus 4 when we factorise that. So y is equal to 3, or y is equal to 4. But let's just remember that we weren't actually trying to solve y. That was a letter I just made up. The actual question wants us to solve x. So I'm going to swap this back now. I'm going to say x squared is going to be equal to 3. Because remember, y is equal to x squared. Or x squared is going to be equal to 4. And now I can square root now, so x would equal, like the square root of 3 will be plus or minus root 3. Do you remember the minus solution? Or the square root of 4 will be plus or minus 2. So these are the solutions to this hidden quadratic. Next example. Okay, I'm going to look in the middle here and I'm going to say let y equals root x. So, I know that y squared 
would equal just x. This is going to be my y squared at the front there. So I'll get 2y squared plus 5 times y plus 3 equals 0. Okay, so again, hopefully that makes sense. y squared, if I squared both sides here, I'll get x. So hopefully it makes sense why I've replaced that x with the y squared there. I can now factorise this, hopefully. If I can't factorise it, I'll need to use the formula. Um, but I think I can factorise that. It's going to need to be a, a 1 and a 3. Yep, that will come together. That's a 3y and a 2y to make a 5y, so that's OK. So I know that y would equal minus 3 over 2, or minus 1. Now I need to come back and actually remember that I didn't want to work out y, that's what I made up. I needed to work out x, and I know that y is equal to root x. That was the substitution that I made. So I know that root x is equal to minus 3 over 2, or root x is equal to minus 1. Therefore, if I square both sides, so minus 3 over 2 times minus 3 over 2 is plus 9 over 4. Can you please make your way to the gyms or the canteen for parenting, please? Thank you. Or if I square both sides there, minus 1 times minus 1 is 1. So those are my two solutions to this hidden quadratic. OK, two more examples. This one here, same idea as before. I'm looking at the number in the middle, um, or uh, the, the variable in the middle here, which in this case, you can think of this as being 7 times 1 over x. So just to mix things up, I'm going to say let a equals to 1 over x, just because I'm a bit bored of y. So in the middle here, I'll have 7a. And at the front here, I'll have 2a squared, because if I square this, I'll get that. So I'll get 2 lots of a squared plus 7 lots of a plus 6 equals 0. And again, let's try and factorise this if we can. If you can't factorise this, like I can say we could use the formula. But hopefully I can. Um, I think that's going to have to be a 3 and a 2. That's a 4, that's a 3, that's a 7. Good, that'll work. So, a equals minus 3 over 2, or a equals minus 2. Give myself a bit more room. Okay, um, and let's just remember that actually I didn't want to work out a, I wanted to work out x. So I know that 1 over x is going to be equal to minus 3 over 2. Or 1 over x is going to be equal to minus 2. So I'm going to do the reciprocal here to work out x. If I just do the reciprocal here, the reciprocal there, I find that x is going to be minus 2 over 3. Or minus 1 half. Next example, same idea, let's say let a equals to 2x, so I know this is going to be a squared, because I know 2 to the power x times 2 to the power x is 2 to the power 2x, so I'll get a squared minus 12 lots of a plus 32 equals 0. Factorise. So a equals 8 or a equals 4. So that means 2 to the power x equals 8 or 2 to the power x equals 4. So 2 to the power something is 8. Uh, that something would be 3. 2 cubed is 8. Okay? I know 2 to the power 3 is 8. 2 cubed is 8, so x equals 3. Or 2 squared is 4. So I know x is 2 now. One final example. 
Just look at that for a moment, have a think to yourself, why is it that this one is a little bit more complicated? I'm hoping you can spot that this is more complicated because of the plus one there. So before we get into the substitution, let's just think about what we could do here. This four to the power two x plus one. Now using index laws, I could think of this as being four to the power two x multiplied by four to the power one. Because when we multiply, we add the powers. So I'm almost like working in reverse as what I've done in GCSE. Quite often in GCSE we'll have taken things like, um, let's just think of a very simple one, x to the power 3 times x to the power 4 equals x to the power 7. But what I'm doing here is actually rather than uh, having it like this with them together, I'm splitting it up. Um, the whole purpose of doing that is now this is this squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this front term as being 4 lots of 4 to the power 2x. Hopefully you can see why that is the same thing as that, because when I multiply these two things together, I would add the powers, so I get 2x plus 1, which is this. And then all, I, all I've done, the 4 to the power 1, I just put that the same. I'm going to write the rest of it out the same as is, uh, it is written above. And now I've got it in a form where I can make a substitution because when I square that, I get that. So let me say, let's y equals 4 to the power x. So this is going to be 4y squared minus 17y plus 4 equals 0. And now hopefully I can factorise this. I think that's right. That gives me minus 16, minus 1 is minus 17. Yep, that works. So, I can now say y equals 1 quarter from here, or y equals 4 from there. Now I can say, remembering that y was actually 4 to the power x. So I can now say 4 to the power x equals 1 over 4, or 4 to the power x equals 4. Therefore, um, right, in order for 4 to the power x to be 1 quarter, the power would be minus 1. If the power here is minus 1, then 4 to the power minus 1 is 1 quarter. Or x is going to be 1 there. 4 to the power 1 would be 4. So there we go. So, things to remember. Hidden quadratics are always when the term at the middle there, if you can square that, you get the term at the front. There needs to be a constant at the end as well. And the general approach is whatever this is in the middle, make that equal to another letter. So then that letter squared will be at the front. You can then solve that quadratic to work out what the new letter that you've come up with is, whether it's a Y or whether it's an A. You can then work out what that letter is. And then remember your substitution to swap that back so you can actually work out what the letter in the question, the variable in the question is. That's it.